Hello, I'm Lee from Woodland Classroom and today I'm going to show you how to make wild garlic kimchi. Kimchi is a Korean side dish normally made with vegetables, with chilies and ginger. That's what makes it kimchi. But today I'm going to replace the vegetables with wild garlic. This is a really easy dish to make. Kimchi is a fermented food. Fermentation is a process that we go through to preserve food so we can enjoy them throughout the year. But it is also really, really good for us. The process of fermentation creates live bacteria, which we then eat and it goes into our digestive system, putting good bacteria into our gut. This in turn provides us with general overall health and a boost of the immune system. It's a very old way of preserving foods, but it's become much more popular again in modern times. The ingredients you need is of course your wild garlic. You need fresh chilies and fresh ginger and some organic sea salt. Make sure you pick plenty of wild garlic because it will shrink down quite a lot through the process. You want to have ready a mixing bowl, quite a large one, a sharp knife and a chopping board these need to be sterilised. Usually a hot wash on the dishwasher is plenty good enough. Once you've got all these things together, you're ready to go. The first thing you want to do is rinse your wild garlic through a colander and then let it sit and drain. So the last thing you want is the chlorinated tap water to be going into your kimchi mix. So give it plenty of time for all the water to drain out of the colander. You might even want to pat it down with some paper towel to get rid of most of that water. Next you want to chop up your fresh ginger and fresh chilli. In a jar of this size I would probably use a whole chilli and about this much ginger. Uh, it all depends on your personal preference. The hotter you like it obviously the more chilli and ginger you're put in. Maybe start off with a little less to begin with. You can always experiment and add more to a second batch later on. I tend to chop up the chilli and ginger quite fine, so when I eat it, it's all mixed in. You might decide to do it in bigger chunks so that when you eat the wild garlic, you can easily pull out the chilli and ginger, making it not quite so hot on the palate. Next, you want to roughly chop your wild garlic. Don't worry about getting it small, it will shrink down, so a rough chop will be fine and pop all of that into your mixing bowl with your chilli and ginger and you're ready to add the salt and start massaging. The next step is to add some sea salt. This is a process which draws out all the moisture of the plant material. As you massage the salt in, it gets wetter and wetter and wetter. However, it's easy to overdo the salt and end up with a dish at the end that's just too salty. So do a little bit at a time and only use as much as you need. Keep massaging for at least five minutes. If it's not feeling wet enough, you might want to add a little bit more salt. But you want to see a good pool of liquid, green liquid at the bottom of your bowl. When you've given it a really good massage and it's really wet and there's plenty of liquid at the bottom of the bowl, you're ready to fill your jars with the kimchi. You want to really ram in that wild garlic into the jars and push the plant material down as far as you can, putting the liquid in also. Now you really need to aim for all the plant material to sit below the level of liquid in the jar. If there's any plant material sitting above the liquid, it will start to go mouldy and it will ruin your batch. So it's really important that you push down with your fingers or a utensil that's clean until that layer of liquid is sitting over the plant material. If it doesn't, you need to go back and massage more with perhaps a little bit more salt. Next, you want to put the lid on your jar and seal it tight shut. This jar then goes into a warm, dark cupboard. Every few days you might want to just open up the jar, check that the plant material is still below the liquid. It also releases any gases that might be building up. When you move the jar, you might see some little bubbles coming up the jar. This is a good sign. This is the sign that it is fermenting. The process takes minimum two to three weeks 
but I found last year with my batches that five weeks was that optimum time and it was tasting really good after five weeks. I did leave some for longer. The longer you leave it, the stronger the flavour. But once the flavour's right for you, it's time to then put it in your fridge, which will slow down the fermentation pro uh, process. And you've got that kimchi to munch on for the next few months or until it disappears. Kimchi goes really well as a side dish, maybe on the side of a salad or a stir fry or a curry. I personally like it in the morning with my scrambled egg. You can have it on cheese on toast. It's also great on crackers with some hummus or some cheese. But you can have it however you like. It goes really well with plenty of dishes. Kimchi usually isn't used as a cooking ingredient. You certainly can add it to dishes in the cooking process, but it would kill all the bacteria. So it tends to be eaten raw to keep all that bacteria alive, which is then going into the gut and doing all the good stuff. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy going out and gathering your wild garlic and then making the kimchi. And then obviously after it's bubbled away and it's all ready, I hope you enjoy it throughout the year. Now if you're interested in more cooking recipes with wild garlic, check out my other video which is all about nettle and wild garlic risotto. That is a beautiful dish also. If you enjoyed this and would like to have some exclusive content, you can become a patron of ours and support us making more videos just like this. We'll leave the link below for you to take a look at that. Thank you for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel or head over to our website woodlandclassroom.com. See you next time in the woods.